Hi, I'm Mark Michael. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon from uh, Illinois Bone and Joint Institute in Chicago, and I am the co-chair of uh, orthopedic and spine quality at the North Shore University Health System in Chicago. And with me today, I have Dr. Nick Shammy. Please uh, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Nick Shammy. I'm the professor and chief of orthopedic spine surgery at UCLA, and I'm happy to be with you today. Great. So uh, today we're going to talk about the growing rate of unnecessary spine surgery in the U.S. And um, we want to define the problem and see if there's anything that we can do to help stop this trend. Mm -hmm. We live in a unique time where um, payers are kind of focused on this idea of uh, value-based care and reimbursements are kind of linked to patient outcome and cost of spending. We're also in this strange time where a lot of spine practices are no longer private, but are uh, incorporated into large hospital um, systems and corporations where you have a lot of administrators looking at bottom line, revenue, efficiency, cost, and of course, income. And so uh, what do you, th those two issues, what do you think is kind of driving this kind of trend that we're looking at with uh, increase in unnecessary surgeries. Yeah. Um, it's good to be here again with you. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, one thing I would like to say, actually, before we delve into the real issues that we're here to discuss is that there is a growing number of spine surgeries that are being done nationally. And that is directly related to the aging population that we're dealing with, right? So some of this growth in the number of spine surgeries being done is because patients need it because they're getting older and that's when we have the degenerative conditions that we take care of, right? Absolutely. So, but with this growth, uh, there's been a lot of attention on whether or not all these spine surgeries that are being done are truly necessary. And we are more and more in the last decade, I would say, uh, focusing on patient outcomes. And what we do for the patients, is it really benefiting the patients? Is it getting them back to work? Is it uh, making them more, uh, you know, uh, active in their lives, enabling them to stay active? Uh, and before, before uh, this interest in these outcomes, we're more focused on what the x-rays look like and have we improved right. the MRI findings. And one of the things I say to patients is we don't treat MRIs, we treat patients. Right. And we have to understand what the patients want more than what we want to do with that x-ray or an, MR an MRI. And I think that's the main focus here, which obviously with more surgeries means more costs for the payers. So linking patient outcomes and the cost is what really what we're here to discuss. And there's a lot of attention on seeing if all these spine surgeries, all these spine surgeries that are being done are truly necessary. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind these bundled payments or value-based care systems is yeah. that, um, you know, by partnering with the patient, you're trying to give them a good outcome. So you want to prevent readmission. You want to prevent extended rehab stays. That's part of the outcome, the beneficial outcome. But you also want to lower your costs of treatment. So you don't want to use the most expensive implants. You don't want to keep them in the hospital for several days at a time. And that's kind of what's driving it. Um, but there's an opposing force kind of looking at revenue, and that would be hospitals. So if you look at the kind of post-COVID world, during the, during the pandemic, uh, a lot of the elective surgeries, orthopedic and spine, uh, were shut down. And there was a lot of loss there, loss of money for these hospitals. When you look at them opening up and starting to do elective stuff again, it's not that these cases have gone back to their baseline or even a little bit above. But it's been reported that it's maybe 51% increase in the, in the last several years. And um, part of what's driving that is these are beneficial types of cases, these elective spine cases for hospitals. So it, there is incentive to get as much of these cases going as possible. What are your thoughts on this? Exactly. And that's a great point because I, I read an article recently that hospitals actually depend on these elective surgeries to make profit because if they provide the care that is deemed necessary by uh, the medical societies and communities and uh, the payers, uh, the, the profit margin for the hospitals is not as significant as these elective surgeries that we're talking about. So there is almost a 
a conflict here where the hospitals are also driving in a way the increase of these procedures by hiring the, the doctors who provide these services, right? Mean, in, in the meantime, we, are, we want to bundle payments, uh, which is a uh, effort by major companies like Walmarts of the world uh, who want to really control the, the, you know, the dollars that are being spent on these surgeries and these procedures that are deemed in some reports, uh, namely a recent Forbes article that talked about how 51% of these surgeries, spine surgeries specifically, are unnecessary. I'm not sure where they got those numbers. I don't sure. know if I agree with the 51%, right. but I, I do agree that there is a significant number of spine surgeries that probably could, uh, you know, could not be done. Right? Sure. Uh, so I think, um, you know, we have to really look at that carefully. And I think, you know, putting really the patient outcomes and the benefits that we provide to the patients at the forefront of all these discussions. And when hospitals are profiting and the surgeons are profiting for more surgeries, more spine surgeries, and we don't, we're not looking at the patient outcomes and the benefits for the patients, then there is a, there is a conflict there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think that's something we really have to be good at looking at and, and uh, studying and modifying the way we do things, perhaps for the future, so we can provide the best and most efficient and cost effective care for our patients. Sure. And kind of tying that into something that you said earlier, uh, this is about the patient and it's not just for the best patient outcome but also involving them in the decision-making. And so uh, this should be a shared decision-making process between the surgeon and the patient. Yeah. And it's been suggested that kind of surgeons nowadays, even like the ones coming fresh out of training, kind of lack that, that talent to look at the patient and kind of display the options for them and share the decision as to, you can go this route and this would be your outcome, but this is kind of how you would benefit, and this is the risk that you may end up with. Um, do you think that that plays a large role in, you know, these unnecessary surgeries that maybe we're not involving the patient in this shared decision making? Yeah, I think, you know, um, that's a very good point. I, I remember I had a mentor uh, 20 years ago, Marshall Urist, who actually came up with the protein BMP that many of us know about, well, all of us know about, all yeah, the spine right. surgeons. But, um, you know, what he was in his 80s. And uh, patients would still come to him and he wasn't doing any surgery. So I asked him, I said, Dr. Uris, why are patients still coming to see you if you're not operating on them or unable to operate on them because you've retired from that uh, role? Uh, and he said, you know, the patients come to me because they're saying these modern doctors only look at their MRIs and they don't even touch or examine them. Right. And I learned the concept of laying of the hand which is what patients uh, come to you for, to give them comfort, to give them reassurance. And you give that by talking to the patient, understanding what they want, and not focusing on the MRI images or what the last report says about this patient. So that being a great doctor and a surgeon requires that connection with your patient. Absolutely. That I think right. it's, it's not really one of the main focuses that we have as we advance healthcare. And this is a problem that's been going on probably for a few decades now. Sure. You know, sure. but I think that's really important for our trainees to understand mm -hmm. that with all this advance in technology, we still have to be patient centric and connect with our patients. Yeah. Um, kind of to swing it in another direction. Um, you know, you had mentioned there's that quote of that 51% of spine surgeons may be deemed unnecessary, whether or not we agree with it. Um, and people have taken that percentage and are kind of pushing, well, what can we do to keep patients out of the OR and to go with non-operative measures and this and that? My point here is that uh, this could swing a little bit too far in the other direction. As we're trying to cut down on unnecessary spine surgeries, you could swing this into a realm where we're spending more on unindicated non-operative management. 
Um, what are your thoughts on that? 100%. In fact, <laughs> I, I think that's a big challenge because if you ask a patient uh, who has back pain or radicular pain, do you want to have surgery? Most people, most people's answer, at least initially in their treatment, uh, no is going to be, I don't want to have surgery. <laughs> no way. No way. And yeah. that answer is going to be held true for a patient who actually needs surgery at that point as, as much as the patient who can benefit from non-operative care. So what, what that does is it pushes the patients to uh, a, a plethora of procedures that are being done for patients before they even see the spine surgeon. And if we push patients who can benefit definitively from a surgery to this non-operative care that in many cases is not proven to provide long-term care, then you're really shooting yourself in the foot. Right. Right? So, and that's, in fact, has happened. There are reports on how the cost of back care has gone up in the last decade or so and most of it is not because of patients getting more surgeries. A lot of it is because of increased procedures, uh, non-operative procedures like epidurals or facet injections or trigger point injections or even opioid prescription, which we had a crisis with. Or ab ablations. Or ablations. Things that are not been proven in, you know, in, with solid evidence that they really provide long-term benefit, but yet patients gravitate towards those procedures mm -hmm. because they're scared of surgery that right. could ultimately benefit them long term. So there is there is definitely uh, you know a a risk uh, that we can control the number of surgeries that are being done and push patients to procedures that are not deemed invasive and then we we're, we're stuck with a situation where we're paying for care that is not proven to be beneficial. Right. And that kind of ties into the uh, patient share decision making, um, you know, not only talking to them about surgery, but if you send them down a non-operative pathway to say, well, these are some of the things that I would suggest and I believe in, and these are some of the things that if you're going in that route to avoid. So we're not going to solve this yeah. issue today, <laughs> but, um, you know, in your thoughts, uh, what kind of things can we do as surgeons to take responsibility for this and kind of change this trend going forward? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I know what I like to do is start locally. Uh, and what I uh, have done uh, in the past several years is make sure that I communicate this mindset and these issues with my trainees as they go right. on to, um, you know, furthering their careers. I think it's important uh, for our us as educators to make sure that we discuss these issues with our trainees, not just the indications and diagnoses right. and how you put implants in patients' backs <laughs> or necks, yeah. uh, but really these aspects of spine care that is so critically important in the longevity of our careers and the success that we have realized and making it better. Right. No, that's a great point. I think it, in my thoughts too, it, it really boils down to the simple, um, the simple phrase that the needs of the patient come first. I mean, whenever you're dealing with a patient that might need surgery, you treat them as your fam as if they're family. You know, yeah. talk to them. This is what I can do for you. This is what I can't do for you. This is what is the expected outcome. Let's go through this together if you'd like. And I think you know that really is just the basis of medicine that sometimes gets lost with all these. Uh, with all this spending and bundles and hospitals and this and that. So, well, thank you. This was a great talk. Uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, I appreciate you being here and, and discussing this topic with me. 